Today we're taking a close look at the brand new Insta360 GO 3 and how it compares to the competition like the GoPro Hero 11 Black and the Insta360 GO 2. Let's go! In this video today, I want to walk around the hardware and talk about what's new and exciting about the new Insta360 GO 3. Also quickly show you what comes in the box and some of the new accessories that are available for this camera. And of course, throughout this video, I will be sharing a ton of test footage that I've shot with the new GO 3 and how it compares to something like the GoPro Hero 11 Black along with the older Insta360 GO 2. And at the end of this video, I will wrap it all up with my opinions and thoughts about this new camera and let you know if this thing's actually worth getting in my opinion, of course. And speaking of opinions, this is an action camera and they can be used in a lot of ways. And in this video today, I'll be generally speaking from my perspective as someone who uses these kinds of cameras for making content for YouTube in my outdoor adventures. That's in trail running, hiking, and occasionally rock and ice climbing. I also wanna mention that this camera was sent to me pre-release by Insta360 to test out for the purpose of this video, but this video is not sponsored or anything like that. And I will be sharing the pros and cons from my perspective. I'll try to be as unbiased as possible and I'll be sharing a lot of my opinions throughout this video, so just keep that in mind. This isn't going to be like a spec read, it's really going to be my thoughts and who I think this camera's for. With all of that jib jab out of the way, let's dive right in and talk about pricing and options with the new Insta360 GO 3. This camera comes in three different flavors. They're all the same camera, but there are three different options for its internal storage. So the cheapest version comes in at $300 $179 and that's going to give you 32 gigabytes of internal storage. The next step up is 64 gigabytes and comes in at $399 and the most expensive option is $429 and gives you 128 gigabytes of internal storage. To be honest, this pricing structure is kind of strange to me because the price difference between 64 and 32 gigabytes is so close. You're only talking about 20 bucks here. Why not get the 64 gigabyte version? And on that note, why not just make one version if you're Insta360 and save some production costs. But this is the way it is. Now that we've talked about pricing and options, let's quickly go over what comes in the box. I'm not gonna waste your time with like an unboxing video. I'm just gonna dump everything out and we'll, uh, we'll We'll go through it. All right, so here's the contents of the box. And obviously all the way on the left here, we do have the Insta360 GO 3 camera and it is in the new action pod. And as you can see here, the camera pops out and we'll talk more about this in a second, but let's look at this other stuff first. So the first thing you'll see is a new mount. So this is a pretty interesting mount. It's a magnetic clasp style mount. So it's got these two little metal fingers that are probably hard to see on camera. And what these little metal fingers do is they actually interlock into the bottom of the action pod. And once you do that, you just kind of push it in and it clips. And once you do that, you can flip out these fingers and turn it into kind of a GoPro style mount. So any GoPro style accessory, whether that be a selfie stick or a uh, handlebar mount or helmet mount or anything like that should work with the GO 3 as well. And just like on a GoPro, you can also flip these fingers out of the way and just sit this down flat on a table. And on top of that, it does have a quarter 20 tripod mount on the bottom there as well. The next thing you'll find in the box is this new sticky adapter. So this has a quarter, quarter 20 mount on top, which you could screw that little mount that I just talked about onto, or you could attach it to various other mounts or adapters. And what's in here is actually a sticky pad and it's actually reusable. So I haven't done a ton of testing with this obviously because it still has the sticker on it, but I have used these kind of mounts before and they do last for a surprising amount of time. It's sort of a rubber material that's adhesive and you can stick this onto a painted wall or the side of a vehicle and use it over and over again just by rinsing it, which is pretty cool. On top of that, you've got another mount here and this is very similar to the magnetic clasp thing I showed you before, but instead of having those kind of GoPro fingers sticking out of the bottom, you get this quarter 20 adapter with a ball head, which is kind of cool. So if you stuck this on top of a tripod or even on a selfie stick, it's got full articulation at just about any angle. The next thing you'll find in the box is this sort of a hat clip mount, I wanna call it this. They had this very similar mount for the Insta360 GO 2 as well. And this is just magnetic. So you take your camera, you stick it in there, and now you can stick your camera on the brim of a hat, which I think is the most common use for this. But you can also put it on like the visor of your car or anything like that where you've got a thin uh, kind of thing you could shove in between the little teeth here and that just clips onto any surface that
that's available, even on a shirt. And then finally, we do have the magnetic puck mount here, and this is super cool. So the idea here is that this is a magnet, and the back of the camera is also magnetized. So all you gotta do is drop the camera on there and it will stick. Why would you wanna do that? Well, the idea is if you wanna use it with a shirt, you can put the magnet inside your shirt, and then you've just got a camera sticking off the front of your shirt, which is kind of an interesting use case. I haven't really done a lot of this, but it is such a low profile and tiny camera. You could go just about anywhere, like walk through a store or even do some sort of adventure like zip lining or something and probably keep the camera right here. And it's actually really secure because the magnet is very strong. It won't pop off accidentally. Even if I pull on it, it's actually kind of hard to get it to fall off. And another handy feature about this little hockey puck style magnet thing is that this string is actually wrapped around the inside and it can become a lanyard for your camera as well. Now that we've completed the quick and dirty unboxing, let's take a closer look at the hardware of this camera. And because this thing's so tiny, I actually have to zoom in a little bit. It's, it's unbelievable. So this is the Insta360 GO 3. And this is the Insta360 GO 2. And as you can see, they have a very similar shape and size. They just look like the same camera, essentially. However, if you do take a close look between these two cameras, you will notice one thing, and it's that the new GO 3 is ever so slightly larger than the GO 2. This change in size makes sense for the capabilities of this camera, but it is kind of unfortunate because I've got a bunch of different mounts from my GO 2 that can do various things. And unfortunately, those mounts do not work with the GO 3 because of that difference in size. Now, just like the Insta360 GO 2, the Insta360 GO 3 has a single button on the front. And you can see if I push both cameras buttons, both will automatically turn on and start recording immediately, which is their quick capture settings. It's a great feature. Now, one thing you'll notice right off the bat is there are two LEDs on the GO 3 and only one LED on the GO 2, which is something that always annoyed me about the Insta360 GO 2. Because with this camera, because it doesn't have a screen or anything, Thing, you never really know if you're recording or not. And that was something that drove me nuts. While on the new GO 3, there's two LEDs. So there's kind of a status LED up top here that is white or blue. And then down the bottom here, you do have a red tally LED that lets you know when you're recording, which is great because you're never left guessing if your camera's on or not. I know the LEDs are a minor thing, but I'm trying to cover all my bases here, so bear with me. The new Insta360 GO 3 has an 11 millimeter equivalent lens that's f2.2. And if you don't know what that means, that's camera speak for extremely wide angle and also relatively fast, so it works well in low light. Another nice touch of the hardware on the Insta360 GO 3 is that the lens cover here is actually replaceable. You can unscrew it and put a new one on if you need to, which is really nice, especially for an action camera that's meant to be mounted in dangerous situations. One thing you'll notice about the Insta360 GO 3, in just like the older GO 2, is that if you look around the camera, there is no SD card slot on this camera because like I said, the storage is all internal to the camera. And that's got its pros and cons. I, on the upside, it probably made this camera easier to waterproof. This camera is waterproof down to 16 feet, I think. It's not like dive ready waterproof, but you can take it in the pool if you want to. Another benefit to the internal storage is that it's internal and it works well with the camera because it was designed for the camera, where on other cameras, you fiddle around with different SD cards and speeds and sometimes there's compatibility issues. That's kind of annoying. On this camera, you don't have to worry about that. However, I do think the biggest downside to the internal storage on these cameras is that it's internal. And once again, if you break this camera, you're out on a rock climb and you drop it off a cliff and it smashes into a million pieces, you have lost all of your footage it's all gone. You're not going to be able to recover that. While on something like a GoPro, if you smash this camera, odds are you'll be able to retrieve the SD card out from within the cameras from the guts and be able to still use the footage. So just keep that in mind. I will say though, when it comes to the form factor of the Insta360 GO 3, it is refreshingly small. I'm so used to carrying around the GoPro for most situations that carrying around this tiny thing is a pleasure to use because you can just throw it in a pocket. You can have it around your wrist on a lanyard. You can throw it in a backpack and not have to worry about it taking up space or being too heavy. Okay, now that we've talked about the camera itself, it's time to address the elephant in the room, and that is this new action pod. One of the major changes with the new Insta360 GO 3 is the inclusion of the new action pod, and this comes with the camera in the box. The new action pod essentially turns your Insta360 GO 3 into a full-featured action camera, complete 
with a large touchscreen display on the back here. All you've got to do is take your camera and simply drop it in and it magnetically clips in place. And as you can see there, it's now charging using the battery internal to the action pod. This action pod is super cool because it's basically got the same form factor as something like a GoPro Hero 11 Black, as you can see here. In fact, it's actually a little bit smaller than the GoPro in most dimensions, even with the action pod attached. Moving around the actual hardware on this action pod, on the front here, you can see everything going on. On the side, we've got two buttons. On the top is a dedicated power button that if you hold it, will turn the camera on. Below that, you have a quick preset button, and I'll show you what that does in a second. And then up top here is a dedicated record button, just like you'd find on most other action cameras. Flipping the camera over to the other side, there's a couple of things. First up is a USB Type-C connection, and that's for charging the camera. And up top here is a little clasp button because the action pod actually locks the camera into place using a mechanical feature. It's not just a magnet. So it's really in there, it cannot fall out, and you can't even pull it out unless you push down on the little lock icon here, then you can remove the camera, which is kind of cool. Another really neat feature about the action pod is that the display here is actually fully articulating. So you can actually flip this up, you know, at any angle, but the best part is obviously flipping it forward. And now you can use this like a vlogging camera or something like that. I quickly want to talk about the user experience with the display on the Insta360 GO 3 and how it compares to something like the GoPro. If you're aware, the GoPro Hero 11 Black also has a front display, but as you can see, it's substantially smaller than the Go 3's front display with it flipped up like that. And this display is useful in some ways, like it's okay to frame your shot with this, but you can't really see any details or what's going on with it. While on the Insta360 Go 3, you've got a much larger display and you can, you can frame your shot very accurately at an arm's length and still see what's going on thanks to the bigger display here. This display does have pros and cons though. It's great for looking at when you're using it for like a vlogging situation, but if you're someone like me who wants to take the camera out of your backpack a bunch of times when you're out on a trail run or a hike, I take the camera out very frequently, sh shoot for a little bit and then I put it back. It's kind of annoying to have to do this and open up that screen every time you wanna shoot a vlog kind of video and then put it away. It's just an added thing you have to do. Another big benefit to this articulating display isn't just using it or in vlog or backwards mode, but it's sort of this in-between mode. And I found my, personally myself, I set my camera up a lot on a tiny tripod on the ground that's very low to the ground. And when the display is on the back, it's really hard to see what's going on. You basically have to be on your hands and knees to see what's going on in the display. With this new articulating display, you can actually put it up halfway and look down at it when you're setting up a shot, and that is super useful for me. One important thing to note on the Go 3 is that the camera itself is fully waterproof. So the camera, just the Go 3, can be in the water down to 16 feet. So you can go swimming in the pool with this, you can go in the shower for whatever reason, you can take this in the ocean. As long as you don't go past that 16 foot mark, you should be fine with this camera. However, once you put the camera inside the action pod, the action pod itself is not fully waterproof. The action pod is IPX4 rated, which means it can take some light splashing or rain or mist, but you cannot submerge this thing underwater or it will break. Another perk of the action pod is like I said before, there is a battery inside of this thing. And the battery specs on this camera are actually pretty darn impressive. And that was a big downside of the older Go 2. When it comes to the battery life on the Insta360 Go 3, if you're filming in 1080p mode at 30 frames per second, you can get up to 45 minutes with just the camera. However, if you do drop the camera into the action pod, you can now film up to 170 minutes with the action pod attached, which is a ton of time. Now keep in mind, this is Insta360's battery claims in that 1080p mode. If you bump up to the maximum resolution, you will get less than that. But in my experience so far, the battery in the Go 3 has held up longer compared to my GoPro Hero 11 Black. But keep in mind, there's different resolutions and frame rates here, so they're not really an apples to apples comparison. Just in general use though, the battery on this camera is quite good. And it's good that the battery is quite good because again, just like the storage, the battery of the Insta360 GO 3 is non-replaceable, which again is kind of a downside because down the road, if the battery degrades at all, you're not going to get the same battery life out of this camera. And again, if you're in the field and the battery dies, there's no way to swap out the battery to keep filming. The only way to keep filming is if you carry along 
along a little portable power bank and you can charge it via USB-C, then you should be okay, but it is another thing you'll have to carry instead of a tiny little battery. When it comes to the user interface on the Insta360 GO 3, it's a lot like every other action camera out there. Like I said before, there is a quick preset button on the side here, and if I press that, you'll see I'll go through various modes that are on the camera. There's a slow motion mode, a loop recording mode that's kind of for using as a dash cam or something, star lapse mode, interval shooting mode, HDR photo, photo mode, video mode, and free frame mode. And on top of that, there is a time lapse mode if you wanna set the camera up for a longer duration of time. Now, when you're actually in a mode, there's still more things you can tweak. So on the bottom right here is your field of view settings from ultra wide mode all the way to narrow mode. And I personally leave mine in linear mode because I think that looks the best. On the bottom left here is your video selection mode. So there's all different resolutions and aspect ratios and frame rates here. And finally, if you swipe down from the top of the screen here, you drop into a sort of quick selection menu where you can dive in to lock the screen out. You can change your stabilization modes here. You can turn on uh, the voice activation stuff and you can change the brightness of the screen. If you scroll over, you can dive in your settings and toggle some other stuff here. And if I say start recording, you can see that the camera automatically started recording and it's recording right now, which is super cool. And if I say stop recording, it's done. And I've noticed that the voice activation of the recording and starting and stopping is super accurate. It picks me up just about every time in any condition. I briefly wanna talk about the usability of the Insta360 GO 3 and all the settings and options and features and stuff because it does get a little bit frustrating when you're using this camera. So if we go through, you can see that on the left here is the ratio, the aspect ratio, in the middle is the resolution, and then we've got frame rate. And depending on the mode you're in, these will change. So you don't always have 2.7K available, for example. And the same goes with the aspect ratio. Sometimes you're locked in 9 by 16 and sometimes you're locked in 16 by 9. Sometimes you don't get 2.7k, sometimes you're locked to 1080p and there's just a lot of hoops to jump through. I get that there's limitations in this camera and that makes sense but one thing that really bothers me is that there's no 60 frame per second option in any mode. And if you're someone who likes me, who, who mainly shoots in 30 frames per second, and you wanna have two times slow motion for certain shots, you can't do that with this camera. You're stuck in 50 frames per second. And in that mode, your slow motion will look a little bit jerky because it's not a true two times slow motion. With the hardware out of the way, let's dive into the specs, the resolutions, the frame rates, and the modes. And when it comes to all of this stuff, I'm not gonna dive too deep and read off every single spec and video and photo and HDR mode and the frame rates and resolutions because that would get pretty boring. Instead, I'll throw a graphic on the screen here that you can pause and read if you wanna see all the specs or just go check out the website, the Insta360 website that I'll link in the description down below. With that said, the notable upgrades on the Insta Go 3 is that the new Go 3 can now film at higher resolutions up to 2.7K at 30 frames per second, where the older Insta360 Go 2 was limited to 14 40p, and that's a substantial bump in resolution. The new Go 3 can also shoot in slow motion at full 1080p at 120 frames per second, which really slows things down, which is pretty cool. There are a couple of quirks with the slow motion mode though. The camera can only shoot in one orientation in slow motion. So if you're in this landscape orientation, you're gonna end up with a vertical video, which is kind of a bummer because if you're using the action pod, you're kind of locked to this if you're using a selfie stick or something, and you end up with that vertical video. If you want a landscape video or a 16 by nine aspect ratio to put on YouTube or something, the camera actually has to be in its vertical orientation and not in the landscape orientation. There's no way to change this. It's just a limitation of the hardware. Another quirk to the Go 3 slow motion mode is that it doesn't record audio. There's no audio at all in the footage, it's silent. So if you need audio to accompany your video, you don't get that here. When it comes to the actual video quality and what it looks like in that slow motion mode on the Go 3, it looks quite good. However, it is dependent on your light. If you're in a low light situation, the footage can look a little bit blurry and kind of smudged and muddy, where in brighter conditions, it does look much better. So just keep that in mind in what situation you're in. Moving right along, I wanna talk about another feature that I really like on the Go 3, and that's free frame mode. So this camera has a square imaging sensor. And why should you care about that? Well, because it allows you to shoot in multiple aspect ratios at the same time, which is super cool. Now, to be fair, the GoPro Hero 11 Black also has the same idea. It's got an eight by seven sensor, so it's 
kind of a rectangle almost square, but it's used in the same way. But it's a little bit more clever on the Go 3 because the software inside is a little bit easier to use. So essentially when you shoot in free frame mode, the camera is recording a full square readout from the sensor. So you're recording the whole image you can get. Within the Insta360 software on your phone, you can choose whether or not you want that square frame or if you want a vertical frame for Instagram or a landscape frame for something like YouTube. This is super useful because because you can shoot in free frame mode, shoot one clip and repurpose it a bunch of times for different platforms. And that's really useful in today's day and age. Now, when it comes to free frame mode, there are two downsides. The first downside is you are limited to 1440p. You cannot film at that maximum 2.7K and I don't know why. The second downside in free frame mode is that all of the footage has to be processed through the Insta360 app on your phone. It can't just be used as a file right out of the camera. You gotta process it through the app and then export it to turn it into a regular video file. And we'll talk more on the exporting and processing in a minute. Just know that it takes a little bit longer to deal with the footage. In that free frame mode, there's also one additional feature which is awesome and that's horizon leveling. Which means if I flip these cameras upside down, they're actually upside down right now, I should still be right side up to you. It looks like I'm not doing anything except raising my hand, but in real life, I'm actually flipping the cameras over and flipping them around and everything should look normal to you, but to me, I look absolutely ridiculous. And when it comes to the actual quality of that horizon leveling, in my testing so far, I do think the GoPro does a little bit better of a job in adjusting to the horizon. It's a little bit more seamless and unnoticeable, where when you do it really fast on the Go 3, it is a little bit jerky and you do see it in the footage, but it is really effective and still pretty solid. Moving right along, I wanna talk about stabilization on the Go 3 because with action cameras, that's a hot topic. The smoother, the better. The Insta360 GO 3 has three different modes for stabilization. And if you swipe down from the top of the screen here, you'll see this little icon that's like a shaking camera. If you tap on that, it'll turn stabilization off, go into stabilization mode one, suitable for daily activities with low preview delay, Mode two is for intense activities like running with medium preview delay. And level three is for extreme activities like mountain biking with a high preview delay. So as you can see here, I'm in level three right now. And if I wave my hand in front of the camera, you can see that there's a crazy lag from when my hand actually goes by to the actual recording or the preview on the camera. Now this is, it doesn't affect your footage at all. There's no big deal here. It's still gonna come out and be super smooth. The stabilization's really good. But if you're trying to vlog with this and you're trying to frame your shot, it is pretty disorienting to see kind of a delayed version of yourself on the screen. With the stabilization modes out of the way, let's talk about the actual stabilization quality. It's really good. Just like on the older Insta360 GO 2, the GO 3 has excellent stabilization and it makes even super jarring motions and things incredibly smooth. What's nice about the GO 3 is that in that standard video mode, the stabilization happens in the camera and is baked into the footage where previously you would have to export this through the app. But in video mode with stabilization turned on, it's right there in the footage and you can just put it on your computer and work with it right away. But one odd thing I noticed is that if you are like crazy and shaking your hand around like nuts and you're in that level three mode, it's actually a little bit smoother on the older Go 2 compared to the Go 3, and I don't know why. Now, in most situations, I prefer the stabilization on the Go 3 compared to the Go 2, but in some situations, if it's really violent and shaking around like crazy, the Go 2 seems to be doing a tiny bit better of a job, and I'm not sure why. Now, when it comes to stabilization, I wouldn't be able to get past this topic without bringing up the GoPro Hero 11 Black because it's kind of the king when it comes to stabilization. How do these two compare? Well, pretty favorably. I feel like in most situations, the stabilization between the GoPro and the Go 3 look really good and there's really no discernible difference. They're both doing a great job of smoothing things out. I think I would give a ever so slight edge to the GoPro Hero 11 Black when it comes to extremely shaky footage or low light footage with stabilization turned on. The Go 3 does have some artifacting and stuff in the shadows because of that smaller sensor and I don't know, something going on with the stabilization where the GoPro does, does a little bit better of a job, but to be honest, they're both really good and I feel like these are just like two of the best when it comes to stabilization. With stabilization out of the way, let's move into the next topic and that's going to be audio quality. The Insta360 GO 3 received a welcome upgrade with a new microphone array that includes two microphones. Now we are on the Insta360 GO 2 
versus the Insta360 GO 3. And again, both these cameras are on the same selfie stick and I'm just walking through the woods with them for a comparison. Right now, I've come back to the loud area of this state forest where there's a highway right through these trees behind me. And I'm curious what kind of audio I'm getting because I know I've had the Insta360 GO 2. I've owned that for like well over a year now. It's a great camera, but the audio quality was always a little iffy for me. And I'm curious with this new GO 3, if it's gotten any better. So right now I can literally see the highway through the trees here and I'm just talking to the camera and this is an audio test between the Insta360 GO 2 and the Insta360 GO 3. And if you're comparing again, we're gonna go back to the GoPro here between the GoPro Hero 11 Black and the new GO 3 when it comes to audio quality. Well, listen for yourself. Right now, both cameras are set to their standard 16 by nine aspect ratios. The GoPro Hero 11 Black is currently recording in linear mode with level lock enabled, and it's at 30p and 4K and the Insta360 GO 3 is currently in standard video mode, 30p, but it's at its maximum resolution of 2.7K. So the resolution is a little bit lower on the GO 3 as compared to the GoPro. And I'm just curious, can you really tell? Is that 1K of resolution really noticeable? Let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear from you. Now we have reached the point in the video where I wanna talk final thoughts and conclusions about the new Insta360 GO 3. This is an awesome little action camera and solves a ton of issues that I've had with the previous Go 2. The usability is better as well with this new action pod, the touch screen on the back, the flippy screen, being able to see yourself, just makes this camera way easier, way more useful to use. And generally, I just love having this thing on me. It's a pleasure to use. With the addition of this action pod, it's a total game changer in this camera lineup because compared to the Go 2, on this camera, I never knew if it was recording, I could never see myself, I couldn't change the settings on the fly, where on the Go 3, I can simply tap and drag on the back of the screen, change my resolutions, my modes, my frame rates, all from within the camera without taking out my phone, which makes life much easier. And I think the icing on the cake with the Insta360 Go 3 is that the video quality is really darn good for such a tiny camera. You've got 2.7K resolution, and the stabilization is class leading. It's right up there with something like the GoPro Hero 11 Black, in most ways. And the final point I wanna make here is that due to the sheer size of this thing, it can go places that other cameras simply can't. You can drop this thing down into a mouse hole or something like that where a GoPro Hero 11 Black just would never fit. Now, even though I just praised this camera in a lot of ways and I do really enjoy using it, there are still a few things I do not love. First up, I've said it a few times already, the non-removable battery in storage is kind of a bummer in my opinion. Yes, it does make things a little bit more streamlined and easy and less fiddly to have to try to get a micro SD card in and out of there, but I do like the flexibility of adding and removing storage and adding and removing additional batteries. And on top of that flexibility, I also like the peace of mind of having a separate storage option like an SD card I can just pop out even if the camera breaks, where on the Go 3, if this camera breaks, you lose all of your footage, which is a real bummer. Another minor nitpick with the hardware on this is again, it's not fully waterproof. The camera's fully waterproof, so you can go swimming with this, but I feel like a lot of people are going to forget that the action pod is not fully waterproof. They're gonna put it in there and they're gonna go diving underwater and break their camera, which would be a bummer as well. And the final nitpick is that the exporting process of getting your footage out of the camera and through your phone is tedious and time consuming. Even with my iPhone 14 Pro with the super fast chip inside, it takes a while to process all of the footage and export it to my camera roll so I can actually use it in a video like this, where on other cameras, I simply just take it off the SD card and I'm ready to go. With all of my ramblings aside, I do wanna say that nothing is perfect. And my job here on YouTube is to highlight the pros and cons of these products to help you make a buying decision. And I hope I did today. I still really like using the Insta360 GO 3 and I suspect I'll be using it a lot in the future for making videos on this YouTube channel, so keep an eye out for that. And now's the point of the video where I want to hear from you. Are you interested in the Insta360 GO 3? Are you gonna go and get one? Let me know in the comments down below which one you're gonna get, what capacity, or if you're just gonna opt for something like the GoPro. Let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear from you. And with that, we have reached the end of this video, and if you're still watching, you probably liked this video. And if you did, I would really appreciate it if you went down and gave me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel down below so you don't miss more videos 
videos from me in the future. And check out the links down below that do help support my channel if you're interested in picking up the Insta360 GO 3 or even the GoPro Hero 11 Black. While you're down there, also check out my podcast that I do on a weekly basis and my merch store. You can pick up some sweet swag like a Chase the Summit trucker hat. Oh boy, that was a lot of plugging. Merch store, podcast, sorry about that. I'll see you later. Bye.